happens. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, keep YouTube up. YouTube live. Yeah, definitely. So, so I let me just very briefly introduce myself. I'm Mudra Karthik, managing trustee of the Institute Centers, that is India Studies Center. Why are we here? It's because of Dr. Bhatta, yes, but uh, also because we have a, a, a very short history of, you know, uh, doing something for board games. Uh, since 2017, we have 16. We have been uh, working for popularizing board games, having conferences regarding it. We have had so far two conferences. One proceeding is uh, published and the other is still on its way. Manfred, please uh, be assured that it will be out in another 15 days. Uh, you had very lovingly and well, well, well uh, it hurt also. It, it hurt somewhere that we have delayed it for such a long time, but we could not help with things here. And uh, that's going to be on the way. That's 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 aside. But let me very briefly welcome all of you. I mean, this is this is the great galaxy of people working for board games. And because of uh, Dr. Patta's book, you all are here. And that's a very great opportunity for all of us to hear you and witness this great gathering. Okay, so I welcome uh, first the uh, author of the book. Dr. Bhatta, and uh, then people he has so lovingly invited, Dr. Irving Finkel, the legendary, I won't say the legendary because he's only 70. <laughs> Though he's, by his looks, he that is very, very deceptive. But Dr. Irving Finkel is almost like a legend for all of us. And he is here. Our very loving Manfred Eder is here. And uh, well, well, there is a galaxy of people, really. Should I take all the names? Because... My compere, uh, Aparna Joshi, are you Aparna there? Uh, just wave at everybody. <laughs> and uh, she will be introducing all of you, including Honorable Harshwardhan Shringla and Honorable Dinesh Patnaik, Professor C. Rajendran, Ram Singh Chauhan, Professor Siddharth Vakankar, who is also quite a legend himself, and Honorable Miss Astrid Beg. Uh, I'm sorry if I get your pronunciations uh, incorrect. <laughs> It's uh, perfectly fine, perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, Professor C.S. Krishnan is going to be speaking. Ridhila Singh is going to be speaking. Uh, Dr. Pandurag Bhatta, of course. And uh, then the last lecture will be, um, last lecture, the, the, the summing up summary will be presented by Ramesh Gauri Raghavan from Institution. Our Dr. Kurush Tanal, who is the director of School of Archaeology, Institution, Institution means India Study Center. He has been requested to uh, give the book launch address, but very sorry to say that, you know, he is down with COVID and he is not in a position to speak for a long time, but still he is here and uh, he will be speaking at least for a short while. So welcome all of you. Thanks everybody for joining us. Ah, and our partner, uh, who have been actually very done the very important job of publishing this book. Uh, their partner, Mr. Pranav Jain, is uh, here. And uh, well, well, welcome, everybody. And our listeners, our students are also here. Many of them will be listening to all of you on our use YouTube live stream. Okay, so let's begin. I think over to Aparna. Aparna. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karnik, for setting the tone for the evening today. And a very warm welcome to all of you who have assembled here on this forum for the launch of Dr. Patta's book. I would now like to invite Dr. Irving L. Finkel for the inaugural address for this event. Dr. Finkel is an Assyriologist, currently Deputy Keeper in the Department of the Middle East in the British Museum, where he specializes in cuneiform inscriptions on tablets of clay from ancient Mesopotamia. He investigates the board games across the ancient Middle Eastern world. He lectures extensively and has often appeared on radio, television, and YouTube. He collects Indian board games and is the founder of the Great Diary Project. Over to you, Dr. Finkel. Thank you for your introduction. And I have to say, this is a really great honor for me because I'm sitting in my office in the British Museum. I'm supposed to be at work doing my serious responsible job. But I'm much more happy to be able to speak to you this afternoon to introduce this great meeting. Well, I'm very delighted that this book's come out. 
um, for the following reason. When I was a student, I remember when I started out my own subject, one of the most useful things that um, was available is what they used to call in the old days a source book. And you had somebody who, between the two covers of a single volume, collected together and uh, information about um, inscriptions, um, geography, history, um, archaeological material, art history, all in one place, so that the student who was going to embark on scholarship had a kind of vade mecum, a thing for which they could turn to help um, regularly with great results. Now, this book, with the range of material it includes, is exactly that sort of thing, a source book, but it is more than that, is what I would call a res resource book, because it is so full of all the disparate matters which anyone interested in the history of chess in India needs to have some control over. And the range of materials are such that no one person can in fact control them all. It always has to be a sort of collaboration. And this book seems to me to be exemplary, especially for the way that the Sanskrit materials are translated so simply and clearly into English, so that the person from outside who unfortunately cannot read such an important language, going through it has some feeling that it's all accessible, that the contents can be thought about afresh and can be considered. And so I think one of the important points about this volume is that historically its overview and its inclusion of different opinions and the range of evidence that we have is so ample that it ought to do a lot to bring in more students and more scholarship in the future. It's a very important pointer and a sort of volcano of ideas which can, in due course, bring in other people. Because the situation about hunting for the origin of chess in India, who we will know better than me, is complex. And there is a shortfall in two areas. One is archaeology, which we can't control, and the other is the translation of all the resources which might be available. And I think that it would be a great move, a great benefit, if um, students who are often graduates of a university, well trained in language and history and other methodological matters, might be encouraged to consider the history of this kind of work, I mean this kind of work with its history, as a field in which they could with profit move themselves. And it would be most desirable if this sort of research could find a more secure place in more universities in India, so that more Indian scholars and, and people from different parts of the country with different resources available can contribute to what will eventually surely be a lucid exposition with the benefit of discovery. So I think it's a great book. I'm proud to have a copy of it. I'll have it by me, as I do now. And um, I, I sort of been through it and um, thought about this and thought about that. One small point I thought I would contribute is about the dispute or the discussion between whether chess might have been two-handed or four-handed at its inception. Whether it had the, this um, interface between two-handed and four-handed and which might have uh, been the earlier, if that is the case. Well, I think it's worth pointing out, and I think it um, is a legitimate matter with regard to the history of chess, that um, generically speaking, um, the default position for board games in world history is a two-handed game, because almost all games are for one person against another, because it's a kind of opposition between two individuals in a non-military way. That is the essence of a game, which is one against the other. And that four-handed games, I would say in principle, grow out of two-handed games for one or other reason. But it is very unlikely that chess shrank from being a four-handed game to a two-handed game. So um, I think this is a great moment. I think the book is very accessible. It's nicely produced. It's, it's a good thing to get into someone's hands because they open it and they say, gosh, this is really very interesting. And that is the sort of ambassador volume which this discipline, which is not dusty and boring and academic, really can benefit from. And I have another idea that if we plan to get more students in India to work on all the different 
sides of this kind of issue, that the inspiration from India's really great chess players might somehow be recruited because they are all over the top of the world chess stage. It's magnificent and it's exciting that India, who created this game in the first place, can now send to Wimbledon the most ferocious battlers who will win the championship. That is a great source of national pride. So I think this book will have its good role to play in the development of further research, which I hope will pro profit from um, jolly interesting new archaeology. The more archaeology we can do, perhaps we'll find something which is really, really clear about the history of chess one day. Anyway, I think Professor Butter should be congratulated and given our affectionate best wishes and um, a big handshake because he's done a great thing to bring all this thing together in one volume. And I think he deserves an accolade. And this afternoon is the first of his big long accolades. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Finkel, for a lovely inaugural address. I would now like to call upon the Honorable Professor Manfred A.J. Eder to offer the keynote address on this occasion. Professor Eder, who hails from Germany, is passionate about research and scientific studies of the history of chess and the origin and age of chessmen, gaming pieces, and dice, focusing on development, provenance, and spread. He has founded the Fyodor Kreis Shak Geshish Sporshu, a charity trust to support and fund research projects investigating the history of Chaturanga and chess. He has handled many milestone projects in the last 25 years related to the history of chess. He firmly believes that chess originated in India based on scientific evidence. Over to you, Professor Edda. You are muted, sir. You. You need to unmute, sir. You need to unmute. No, no, no. Please wait. Please stop. Manfred, you, you are unmute. not audible. You are not audible. Please switch out. So you need Please to start your mic. There is a small red mic somewhere in, uh, down below. Click on it. The first button. Yes. Oh, right, right. Are we together now? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Honorable audience, respected speakers and dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, and last but not least, my dear friend, Professor Panduranga Bata. What a pleasure for me to participate in your book launch event and to deliver, as you suggested, a keynote address. Since my mother tongue is Bavarian, I had to look up the exact definition of keynote in the dictionary, and this is what I found. To give special force to certain ideas so that they will be noticed and remembered. I will try my best. On the basis and with references to your book, Panduranga, entitled Dice Play and Origin of Chess in Sanskrit Literature, let me choose eight pinpoints in connection with the Chaturanga chapter, my domain, which seem to be worth for our listeners today and to be taken home and followed up in India. In continuation, of what Her Excellency Pratipa Baka in her function as Consul General of India in Frankfurt in February 2020 called much to be desired in her message for our conference book, Mission Kanoj 2020, to accompany our meeting there. I quote, I hope that this initiative furthers the work in the direction of knowing more about the origin of chess. And also, I hope that this mission results in reopening of work and initiation of excavation and all the research in that direction. Pandoranga Bata, who also participated in our FSG program at the new Government Archaeological Museum on February 27th and 28th in 2020 in Kanoj, 
from where Chaturanga, later Chess, started its journey around the world under the Maokari dynasty, combines traditional records about the game gathered from Sanskrit literature with later unlearned facts and probabilities from new research discoveries and recognitions, be it in terms of historical documentation or even in confirmation by archaeological proofs. Indeed, this book is not thought only for pleasure, but equally challenging for further considerations and conclusions to be drawn and actions to be taken in fostering research and safeguarding India's history. How? By continuing programs performed over more than 25 years, covering the time frame from our beginning in Pondicherry in 1996 till Kanoj in 2020, which must not become a full stop. As far as contributions during this period by our charity trust, Chess Historic Research in Germany are concerned, Professor Butter's book was the last project we were able to support because we now closed our books as already in mind in 2020, when I stated the intention of giving it all back to India to give it another life. Here are my eight promised pinpoints, which I would like to draw your attention to as pending projects, mainly in connection with the invention of chess in India. Pinpoint one, we suggested at various levels to several influences in and of your country to apply at UNESCO to honor the invention of the game of chess with the award of an intangible cultural world heritage. Respective attempts from Germany on behalf of India could not match the rules. Pinpoint two. Following our first visit to Kanoj in 2007 and its royal mounds left over from the Maokari and Harsha dynasties, we started to plea for new archaeological excavations once initiated by a group of private enthusiasts around Sri Vicharanka Mishra as early as 1955. Who can force to rediscover this historic place. We did not have this in mind only in the hope that one or the other trace of Chaturanga, for example, respective pieces made of terracotta could be found there once used for the didactic model of the Indian army. Archaeological excavations leading to access to the ruins of the palaces of the Maokari kings, Harsha and their successors residing there could be a tourist attraction of great interest for India and many countries abroad. So there are two reasons why to try. Pinpoint three. Members of the Mishra family have been so generous to let us have several terracotta objects found on the mounds for investigations in Germany, whether they could represent Chaturanga pieces, elephants, horse riders, foot soldiers. And yes, I think yes. Where are the experts in India to follow up? Pinpoint four, we must find the gaming pieces of Chaturanga was the claim postulated in November 1997. And the so-called five chessmen made of stone illustrated by Bata in his book on page 248 in comparison with the world famous chessmen from Afrasia could serve for guidance what to look for. Pinpoint five, what to look for, last but not least, also in Bihar, in Patna, south of formerly Pataliputra and Gaya, 
where the Maukaris resided before their Maharaja Hari Varman went to Ganoj around the end of the 5th or beginning of the 6th century AD to expand their power all over India's north. Bata on page 316 mentions Henry Greenberg, who pointed to Pataliputra already as early as 1986. The fact that the Patna museums do not hold terracotta pieces suitable to exercise war, as described by Bana, should by no means be reason to give up, since another principal necessary element of the invention of chess could be located there, the Ashtabada board in Bodhgaya. Pinpoint six, the distribution of recent literature may cause interest at various levels, and we hope to be able to contribute. In November 2021, we sent our conference book, Working Papers, Mission Kanoj 2020 to 17 university and public libraries in India to be offered there to attract the people of India. Professor Bata's book will certainly follow. Pinpoint seven, a collection of dice, gaming pieces, including Pachisi sets, chess sets and chessmen available in Germany can be made subjects to studies and further investigations. And I do look forward dear Pandoranga, for your visit here to examine them. For gaming pieces under the prime question, which games have been played with them, we all are waiting for the proceedings of playing with memories in print by Institutsen, which includes the show of an exciting selection. And pinpoint eight, Bridging Pondicherry with the first ever health symposium on the origin of chess entitled Approaching the Roots of Chess in 1996, the core of Bata's compilation in part two, towards the working papers of meeting Mission Kanoj 2020, is framing 25 years loaded of discussion with people fighting with different views and positions, sending letters, emails, WhatsApp, SMS, back and forth. And many of these documents, even much later, may be tools to deal with giving it all back to India to give it another life. To sum it up, these are the ideas to be remembered as required for a keynote. If I am correct, it was William Faulkner who once stated, the past is not dead. It has not even passed. Certainly this will remain so also in the future. Our charity trust closed the books while Panduranga Bata has opened his dice play and origin of jazz in Sanskrit literature. Beyond its contents is an important contribution to what Her Excellency Pratipa Bhakha expressed as a desire when she wrote to strengthen the long lasting good relation between Germany and India. Let us continue. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you, Professor Eder, for a lovely keynote address. I will now request Dr. Purush F. Dalal to officially launch Dr. Bhatta's book, Dice Play and Origin of Chess in Sanskrit Literature, and to say a few words. Dr. Dalal is the director of the School of Archaeology in Stusen. He is also the co-director of the Salset Explorations Project, a massive urban archaeology project documenting the archaeology of Mumbai since 2015. He taught archaeology and allied subjects at the University of Mumbai for 10 years. He also actively works on memorial stones and asker stones in India and dabbles in numismatics, defense archaeology, architecture, ethnoarchaeology, and allied disciplines. He teaches via Instagram lives and at various online platforms like Mythopia and Instusen. Please allow me to add here that Dr. Al Dalal has been quite unwell for the last one week, but has still made time to join us on this happy occasion. We will be happy if he can sh briefly share some of his thoughts with us after the launch of the book. Over to you, Dr. Dalal. Thank you very much, Aparna. Um, 
I'm really sorry that I'm not in absolutely the finest fettle. And I uh, hope you can all hear me. Uh, it is a singular honor that Professor Bhatta has conferred upon me to do the actual book launch of his book. And uh, just like my friend, I had to look up exactly what the book launch address is. So uh, I did that. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Institution Trust, the publishers, and all of you all gathered over here for this opportunity to speak amongst stalwarts in the field of games. Um, you know, when there are people like uh, Dr. Finkel and uh, Dr. Ida and Professor Bhatta, Professor Palambal and others gathered, I think uh, mine is a rather small voice. So I shall first go through the job of doing the actual book release. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, the official book release of Dr. Bhattar's book. So uh, I've had the good fortune of having this book for a few weeks and uh, I've had time to go through it. Uh, though I must say, uh, I will need to go through it again and again. Uh, I see this book as four different things. Um, number one, uh, this is the sum total of a life's work. It is a life's work of bringing together things uh, which started off from what it seems to be uh, quite on a whim and became a driving passion throughout Professor Bhattar's life. And this is a, a kind of homage to the entire work that he has done in these two specific fields. And there is a lot more that he has done. So uh, let's not get car carried away by only this, but while we are focusing on this, uh, it's very interestingly split into dice play and chess. And uh, there are some very, very obvious reasons for this. The fact that Chaturanga is the uh, antecedent of modern chess and that it is played with dice and that it is played amongst either two or four people. And uh, bringing this linkage together is something that we seldom see. Uh, number two, I see this as a great tribute to his friend Manfred Eder. And that is quite obvious in the opening part of the book where Professor Bhatta makes it very, very clear about the kind of role that Manfred has played in his life, uh, the kind of encouragement that he has received from Manfred, the friendship, the camaraderie, and of course, the academic association. So that is definitely the second uh, telling point of the book. The third, I think uh, Dr. Finkel has covered in its entirety by saying that this is actually the go-to book today for these two disciplines. Uh, growing up uh, as a young scholar, one desperately looked for source books and resource books and hoped and prayed that there were such books in one's fields. And I'm sure that those who worked with games and who worked with dice and who worked with Chaturanga and chess have also felt this great need of all this data being present in one place at one time. And that will be the big academic contribution. I mean, this book will be something that is referred to uh, for decades, if not longer, as one of the source books to go to. As in, this is where I started chasing down my sources from. Uh, I am sorry that I cannot read Sanskrit, but the details given in Bhatta 2022, Poland, so and so, so and so, more than adequately cover the requirements. So I see that kind of referencing taking place, as I said, for the next many, many years. Apart from this, these three things, which one would think would be uh, way more than enough as far as the contribution of the book are concerned, I think one of the biggest contributions of this book is in bringing alive a subject which has kind of moved to the back seat. This uh, interest in games, research in games, this interest in uh, gamesmen and their antecedents 
is something that has become uh, something that has been pushed back. It's no longer at the forefront of interest amongst archaeologists and various other historians and their ilk. I think this is something very critical. I met Dr. Bhatta for the first time in 2019 when the India Study Center Trust organized the Playing with Memories conference. And I remember it being so impressed by him and his colleagues and the kind of work that had been done and realized that there was an incredible hiatus in India. Uh, there was Dr. Bhatta and his colleagues, his friends, his compatriots, uh, who belonged to one echelon that dates back to the 90s when they started doing their research. And then there seemed to be a vacuum in the 2000s and the 2010s. And this desperate vacuum needed filling. We've been working towards it at the India Studies and the Trust. Mrs. Karnik and her team at Kelia, including Nyaneshwari and Ramesh, who are both here, have been working very hard towards popularizing ancient games, towards bringing this uh, you know, into the purview of younger students today, making them very relevant. And I think a book like this is the need of the hour for these young students. When these young students want to find a place for this subject, when they want to look, and I'm sorry to say this this way, it sounds a bit wrong, a bit nationalistic, but when they want to look at one of their own, introducing one of their own disciplines, as opposed to always somebody from outside the subcontinent talking about the discoveries of the subcontinent, this is where this book shines perhaps the greatest light and the greatest hope that this kind of study will continue, will become more popular, and hopefully Manfred's dream that we excavate the palaces of the Mokaris will hopefully come into play. So thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Bhatta, and thank you very, very much to all the illustrious persons. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, not in the best of health, and uh, thank you very, very much for this absolutely singular honor of releasing this book here today. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Dalal, for joining us today for the launch and for sharing your insights with us. I now invite the Honorable Sri Harshwardhan Shringla for a special address. Sri Harshwardhan Shringla is the G20 Chief Coordinator, Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. During his tenure as Foreign Secretary, he was responsible for man managing key aspects of the COVID pandemic response. In a four decade long Indian Foreign Service career, he has worked in all major diplomatic geographies and issues. He's an experienced multilateral diplomat, having worked on two UN Security Council tenures, having served in the India mission to the UN in New York, and headed both the UN political and SARC divisions. He has addressed a wide range of institutions and interest groups, including think tanks, universities, and business associations in India and abroad. Over to you, Sri Shringla. Well, thank you very much and uh, Namaskar and good evening uh, to all participants on this program. Um, let me begin by congratulating uh, Professor Pandurang Bhatta for the launch of his uh, book on dice play and the origin of chess uh, in Sanskrit literature. Um, <clears throat> I think many of our uh, very eminent scholars and experts have spoken on the book, on the subject, uh, and I must admit that I'm neither scholar nor expert. So I will try and provide what is a, a generalist uh, layman's perspective in, uh, in uh, you know, looking at this book and, and, and going through it and reading it and knowing Professor Bhatta, of course. Um, some of us uh, would have uh, seen uh, this film uh, by a famous uh, director, Satyajit Ray, called Shatranj Ke Kiladi, which means players of chess. Um, and uh, this book is really about uh, you know two uh, noblemen of this uh, kingdom of Abad in 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 the current state of Uttar Pradesh in India, who are so preoccupied uh, with their game of chess that they fail to uh, notice uh, the geopolitical changes around them and the annexation of the kingdom of Abad by the British colonialists uh, at that time. Um, he, but you know the origins of chess clearly in India. Uh, far predate, uh, you know, the um, uh, 18th century, um, I think, when uh, the annexation of Kabad was uh, taking place. 
Um, in fact, as uh, Professor uh, Bhatta brings out in his book, uh, you know, the origins go right back to the time of Katuranga and perhaps even dice play is the origin of uh, modern day chess. Um, so uh, obviously it takes us, uh, you know, a long time uh, back into antiquity. Um, if you look at uh, some of the aspects of the book, I think uh, Professor uh, Manfred Eder has brought out a very interesting uh, point right in the foreword itself. He says that, uh, you know, thousands of been, books have been written about chess, um, but how many books have been written about, uh, you know, dice play? Uh, they have, you can easily count the numbers of books that have been written. And I think one primary value of this book lies in the fact that it is uh, brings out uh, information um, uh, on a domain that is that is very very limited. Uh, obviously, uh, you know the uh, research, uh, the level of uh, uh, let's say uh, you know uh, published works uh, on this issue uh, has been uh, very limited. And Professor Bhatta, um, using his uh, uh, very, very special uh, knowledge, and, and I want to say something on that as well, has brought out a book which, which uh, very few people could have uh, brought with this level of uh, scholarship, uh, erudition, and uh, expertise. I, of course, uh, uh, knew Professor Bhatta from the time that he was the chair of Indian studies um, at uh, the uh, Silpakorn University, a very re renowned university in Thailand. Uh, and uh, you, he was the person who uh, actually was heading the uh, Sanskrit department as a chair. And, uh, and of course, uh, we always uh, looked at him as a Sanskrit scholar. So I was surprised to find that Sanskrit was one of his many uh, you know, areas of accomplishment. He's actually a professor of management. And at that time was uh, you know, a member of the faculty of the Indian Institute of Management in, in, in Kolkata. And I think, uh, you know, obviously uh, a combination of his uh, uh, Sanskrit, knowledge of Sanskrit, his, his uh, academic uh, background, uh, his ability to research matters, and of course his management skills have all, I think, been drawn into um, the publication of this particular work uh, that we see. Um, his, his, it's actually a monograph. What he has brought out is a monograph, and he... Uh, uh, clearly has, uh, you know, gone into uh, sources which are not just Sanskrit, but also Buddhist literature, which is also uh, partly Sanskrit, uh, partly Pali. Uh, his, his book makes, uh, you know, general observations related to the nature of uh, the play and uh, conventions associated with the play uh, as revealed uh, in, uh, in these stories. Uh, he also brings out the good and bad aspects of gambling, uh, occasion for playing of dice, uh, technical terms in dice play. Uh, he goes into great detail on you know gambling houses and punishments and penalties for defaulters, uh, tax policy and disputes arising out of play presented in some detail. And of course, the practical side of uh, the game has been given a lot of emphasis, equipment, the techniques involved, um, also uh, information on insights uh, on how the game was prohibited encouraged, curtailed, uh, tolerated down the centuries. Uh, he's, of course, brought out the relationship between chess, uh, Katuranga, and the dice play. And this is of, uh, in, in the, this is, uh, of great interest as it shows much light on the evolution uh, of the changes which uh, dice play has undergone from time to time. Um, in fact, um, the uh, second, you know, second part of the book scrutinizes views, discussions, conclusions by various scholars uh, in the light of their references. Uh, to chess uh, found in Sanskrit literature. Uh, now, uh, there are some, of course, uh, chess historians who, as I mentioned earlier, believe that chess originated in India. Uh, it was played on a board of 64 squares. This is brought out in the book. Uh, and of course, uh, you also have what is in the book is Sir William Jones, who, who opined that uh, chess actually went from India. Katuranga was introduced into Persia in the 6th century BC. And hence, uh, as Shatranj, uh, which is again another word for chess uh, in the Arab world, and uh, and ultimately uh, chess actually originated uh, in India. Um, and this is, uh, you know, the observations in this book are uh, uh, cite recent research on this topic by Indian and Western uh, chess historians. Um, so, if you look at it, uh, very few scholars, as I mentioned, in recent times have fully grasped the study. Comparison of board games uh, uh, at, at this many levels, uh, which uh, essentially is a contribution to history, 
anthropology, sociology, psychology, and indeed uh, other disciplines. Right? This is a very holistic work if you if you uh, consider it uh, from that perspective. I think Professor Butta wanted me to uh, convey a special word uh, of thanks to uh, Professor uh, Manfred Eder because he is the one who has provided both the substantive and financial support uh, for this project. Uh, not only that, he has been, uh, you know, and he has played an important role as brought out earlier in supporting, uh, let us say, uh, links uh, uh, and, and contacts between Indian and German academics. Uh, and in doing so, and as our Consul General in Frankfurt has uh, highlighted, in doing so has promoted, uh, you know, um, cooperation and friendship between India and Germany at a, at a level that is very important to all of us. Um, and I, I think there is a level of appreciation also, obviously, for the publishers, Motilal, Banarasidha's publications in Delhi, uh, who have uh, published this uh, work neatly and elegantly. Um, our consulate in Frankfurt uh, has been uh, has been uh, of uh, uh, help in uh, sending some essential research materials, uh, you know, through post during the Corona period, uh, and of course the study Indian Study Center in Mumbai, which is conducting this program, uh, has been uh, a major factor in the successful release of the book. Um, I think from from a certain point of view. Um, um, as I said before, only a certain type of person with a certain uh, capacity and certain abilities could have brought this book out because it really involves a lot of uh, uh, detailed research, but also a deep understanding of Sanskrit. Uh, and uh, Professor Bhatta has brought out several publications before, of which some of which have been associated. I mean, associated as in similar events as this launch. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, is is really the the right person uh, with the right capacities to uh, bring this book out. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, my colleague Ambassador Dinesh Patnaik uh, is also part of this program. Um, he would, I'm sure, also add to a, a generalist view in what is uh, correctly uh, a scholastic uh, appreciation of this book. And I hate to be one to give, uh, be the only one giving uh, uh, a layman's point of view. But uh, but I also want to excuse myself because as I had mentioned to Professor Butter, I may have to um, leave this program after I speak because I have another engagement. But I want to conclude by uh, wishing uh, Professor Butter all the best uh, in the uh, success uh, of the book. Uh, uh, widely, I'm sure it will be read not only by uh, chess historians, but also uh, common uh, people uh, like myself, uh, who have an interest uh, in the game. Uh, and of course, all of our participants who are with us uh, today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, Shri Shangla. May I now call upon Honorable Shri Dinesh K. Patnaik to give us his special address. Shri Patnaik assumed charge as Ambassador of, of India to Spain and Andorra in January 2022. He is a career diplomat of the Indian Foreign Service with experience of over 30 years in a variety of interesting and challenging assignments. He has held the post of Director General of the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Ambassador Patnaik holds a master's degree in business administration from the Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, Dr. Bhatta, it's uh, good to see you. Uh, when we started this uh, project, I was that time Director General of ICCR. And uh, now, since then, by the time we could hold this meeting, I am now the ambassador in Spain. And like uh, Foreign Secretary, ex-Foreign Secretary Harshingla told us, I will give a generalist opinion, but I realized after I reached Spain, that Spain had a lot to do with chess. I mean, it was Chaturanga, the, the four, the cavalry, the elephants, the chariots and the infantry, it started. And till the middle 15th century, till the first book on chess was published, which was in 1495, and it was published here in Spain, the, there was no queen. It was actually only an advisor to the king who was standing next to the king, which could only move one, uh, move diagonally. It could not move even beyond that. And it act changed in 1495 when Queen Isabella took over as the queen of Castilla, Castilla Leon. And she actually made the queen the most powerful piece on the board. I mean, it, it's a testimony to the fact that there was no queen before the 15th century, and it was Queen Isabella of Spain 
who had a huge influence in making the queen the most powerful piece on the board, which the queen could move everywhere. And this shows how much, when we look at things intricately in common, we see how countries across the world have relations which you never could understand unless you come here as diplomats or you come as historians to learn and see how uh, the game of chess has changed over time. I mean, I remember a time, I think about four or five years ago, a little more, 10 years ago, when they started a chess game called Diplomat's Chess. Do you remember that? Or with 43 squares instead of 64 squares, 43 squares round table, where there was a piece called the Diplomat. And the work of the Diplomat piece was not to capture another piece, but to subvert the piece, which means that if the Diplomat gets the piece, the piece becomes from black into white. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. playing black, it becomes white, and if you become white, it becomes black. So you actually subvert them. And to a large extent, uh, uh, Ambassador Harshingla or Foreign Secretary Harshingla will tell you that that's a part of the job that we do all, every day. I mean, trying to make people turn from black into white or white into black. And that's the beauty <laughs> of this game. This is a game which is extremely popular in Spain. Um, and I'm, in fact, looking forward to talking to Dr. Bhattas to see whether we can actually do a Spanish version of the book here, or at least release it or during one of the literary festivals that we are planning here, bring him here to speak about chess because there is a huge following of chess in this country. And uh, Spain, there's a very beautiful anecdote which I wanted to tell you while I was talking about this is that Queen Isabella actually sponsored Columbus's trip in 1492 to discover India. It's a travesty of fate that he landed up on the other side of the world because he wanted to go around the world and landed up discovering the Americas and US. But she managed to convince her husband, Ferdinand, who was of Aragon, to actually sponsor the visit by allowing him to defeat her in chess during a match. So they were both great chess players, and she allowed him to defeat her in a chess, then told him that, you know, we got to sponsor Columbus to go across the world to discover India. And he said, oh, perfect, go ahead. So that's the kind of stories which abound in this country. And... These are things which I would like Dr. Panduranga to come and do because this book is going to become a, a go-to book for all historians of chess, all lovers of chess. It has uh, things in it which I can, I can testify to it. I've gone through the book. Uh, Dr. Manfred, uh, thank you very much for helping Dr. Bhatta to do this book. But this book is a super book on chess and I'm planning to publicize it and make it as popular as possible in Spain itself. And I wish you all the best. Uh, I wish the book does well in India. It's good to see many of you here. And I wish you all the luck in this. Thank you very much, Navishkar. Thank you so much, Ripatnaik, for sharing some really lovely anecdotes and your insights. Our next speaker for the evening is Professor C. Rajendran, former head and dean, Department of Sanskrit, University of Calicut, Kerala. Professor Rajendran has done research related to the origin of chess and demonstrated that the war perspective inherent in the game related to the notion of the fourfold army of ancient India precludes the possibility of its origin outside India. He has analyzed texts like Harsha Charita of Mana, Kavya Lankara of Rudrata, and Chaturangashtaka of Melpudur Narayana Bhatta to explore the nature and movements of chess pieces in ancient and medieval India. Over to you, Professor Rajendran. Thank you, Aparna Joshi. Um... Uh, good evening and warm welcome from the distant Kerala, which is known as God's own country. Uh, first of all, let me express my sincere thanks to my friend, Professor Panduranga Bhatta, for uh, having invited me to say a few words of felicitation on the occasion of the launching of his exquisitely produced book entitled Dice Play and the Origin of Chess in Sanskrit Literature. I heartily congratulate him for his relentless research on ancient Indian board games, which happens to be, at least in India, a much neglected field of Indology. Motlal Banasidas is a leading publisher of Indological works, and they have to be congratulated for taking up the book for publication. Professor Bhatta's engagement with board games began ever since he took dice play in Sanskrit as a research topic for his doctoral work. A Kerala writer, Dr. K. Kunjuni Raja, has been instrumental in 
uh, stimulating the interest. And I remember, I gratefully remember him on this occasion. Uh, Bhatta's interest has been contagious. And I gratefully remember that it was thanks to Professor Bhatta that I also started doing a bit of research related to chess by a way of decoding tests like Kavyalangara of Rudrada and Chadurangashtaga of Malpatur Narayana Bhatta. A great charm of chess research has been that we could be a part of an international community during exemplary research on board games, especially Chaduranga. I acknowledge that my interaction with scholars like Manfred Dieder, who is happily with us, Egbert Meisenberg, Renate Said, Michael Mark, Christoph Wille, and the late laminated Andrea Bokrovi has always been very inspiring in my own research. The enthusiasm with which Manfred Eder and his spirited team has been working to explore Indian origin of chess and thus to restore the rightful place to India as the birthplace of this wonderful game should serve as an eye opener to Indian scholars. These scholars are really the cultural ambassadors of India. It is a great pity that the remarkable output of all this meticulous research has not become a part of the mainstream discourse in India. Hopefully, things will change in future. This occasion is all the more precious for me as it gives me an opportunity to share the virtual dais with many eminent scholars. I would like to mention the names of Erwin Finkel, Manfred Eder, who has been the driving force of our chess research over the years. I am happy that both Siddharth Vakankar and C.S. Radharshan, who have participated in many events in the past, are also here. I also express my keen sense of appreciation of the spirited work being done by Institution Trust for the promotion of board game research, of which this meeting is the latest instance. In his interesting work, Professor Bhatta has carefully collected a lot of available data related to dice play and chess scattered in Sanskrit literature. I have no hesitation to state that his work is an indispensable document for anybody who cares to do further research in the area. Dice and chess, though played on a game board of 64 squares called Ashtapada in Sanskrit, have more differences than similarities between them. While dice play is sheer gambling based on chance, chess, the symbolic arrangement of the fourfold Indian army on board, depends upon an all encompassing intelligence capable of visualizing the consequences of the present action in on future. The million dollar question faced by researchers is as to at which historic point did the fourfold army came to be represented on a board to mark the occasion of the origin of Chaduranga, which later, very much like the animal fable of Panchatandra, started its world too and became a part and parcel of world civilization itself. When we read the interesting passage, Ashtapadanam Chaduranga Kalpana in Harsha Charida, referring to the life and times of the pacifist King Harshavardhana of Kanauj, one may not fail to detect the euphoria generated by the new game when army metamorphosized into a play -to toy and an intelligent military exercise merged into one. I do feel that we are at, at last seeing some light at the end of the tunnel and the time may come when we could recapture the fascinating story of the origin of the game and its migration into far off places and the remarkable transformations it underwent in its journey. It is really fascinating that many original pieces of Chaduranga, like the minister, the horse, and the chariot completely changed their nature and features in the course of their journey. It is interesting that the minister, nothing more than a shadow of the king in original Chaduranga, became 
the all powerful hewn in the western avatar just now it has been pointed out by honorable ambassador to spain the horse becomes the horse rider in the night the elephant becomes the bishop and the chariot becomes the rook chess has also become a metaphor of the vagaries of human destiny in arts and literature who can forget the sadranj ki kiladi of satyajit ray where chess becomes the desperate resort of rulers who lost their power omar khayam writes it is all a checkerboard of nights and days where destiny with men of peace plays hither and thither moves and mates and slays and one by one back in the closet lays the extent to which chess percolated into human civilization can be gathered from the fact that shakespeare found it quite natural for the lovers miranda and ferdinand to be engaged in chess play in the tempest i believe that it will not be out of place if i mention two important points points which deserve serious consideration on the part of indologists and policy makers they have already been highlighted by our good friend manfred reader the first is related to archaeological work in and around kanauj to unearth ancient game pieces which may throw valuable light to the chess pieces used in ancient india in fact archaeology and literary documents are both necessary to probe further into the history of chess this may require international collaboration and initiative from some agencies probably more international conferences conferences and workshops could be organized in india and a road map pre- pre- be prepared for further research i think this is a very good beginning in that direction the second point which i would like uh, make is that if india is indeed the birthplace of chess steps must, must be taken to ensure that chaduranga gets its due recognition as a masterpiece of oral and intangible heritage of humanity which is instituted by the unesco i do hope that this meeting will spur activity in this direction from all those who are interested in chaduranga game thank you very much thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us professor rajendran i now call professor siddharth y vakankar to share his insights with us respected professor vakankar is a visiting professor at the kavi kulaguru kalidas sanskrit vishwavidyalaya ramtek india he is currently working on a project titled contribution of sanskrit to the games of chess playing cards and snakes and ladders his search bore fruit when he could procure copies of some nearly 10 unpublished manuscripts on chess he wrote a long bibliographical paper on a survey of sanskrit works on the game of chess which is considered by scholars all over the world as a exhaustive bibliography on chess over to you professor vakankar thank you madam it's a great pleasure uh, to see my old friends dr panduranga bhatt manfred eder isvin kinkel professor rajendran and radha krishnan and a new friend from the institute first of all i must congratulate dr bhatt for his diligence and dedication his first book which i read was his phd thesis dice in sanskrit literature i started working on the games because being a student of sanskrit literature from bombay university i realized one fact that this aspect of social orientation of sanskrit literature is totally neglected in our research field so i started working on this 1977 45 years back and thought that unless and until we bring out the sanskrit text especially unpublished manuscripts to the notice of the scholars we will not be able to prove our or to project the indian tradition of the games so with that aim i started working on these three games and fortunately for me i could get rare manuscripts from distant places as distant as pennsylvania or vienna so this 
aspect of sanskrit literature i am very sorry to say as a sanskriti this is not an accepted field this was not an accepted field of research those days nowadays most of the foreigners are also in, uh, interested in these board games i met uh, mr jacob dr ivin referred to him jacob had come to baroda and we had a long discussion about the game of snakes and ladders i gave him a lot of input he had uh, he acknowledged that in his book but when i came to understand that this is a very neglected topic by the sanskritis i thought that i should concentrate this on this line so with this intention with this noble idea of bringing something unearthing i am not an archaeologist but i am unearthing these literary sources to bring out the facts which are so to say concealed in the manuscript form i must say that dr bhat started with a small book a booklet now he has come with a very voluminous work i should say very exhaustive as well as very exhausting book intensive as well as extensive study of the entire sanskrit literature quoting verses and chapters right from the vedic times up to the classical literature everything we tinge with buddhist and jain resources so in a nutshell i can say we see earlier scholars have not kept any scope for me to speak about the contribution of dr bird we met first in 1996 and at pondicherry again in 97 at visvaden and our continuous collaboration is going on and i have been benefited mostly by manfred eder's outlook and the encouragement he gives for the studies and dr bhat has taken full advantage of this uh, inspiring towering figure of manfred eder dr bhat's study is a very deep and analytical study embracing almost all the parts all the angles of the study archaeological study sociological study and more thing one more important thing is it is difficult to encompass the entire material in so nicely executed work and i would like to congratulate dr bhat more so the publisher because if you write the book and they are not published the general public or the scholars don't get the benefit so both these scholar as well as the publisher deserve our compliments and patient i will give my observation one important thing during the long process of his dedicated and diligent work dr bhat could not lay his hands on very two important papers by professor madhukar anand mehendale his papers were titled draupadi's questions and these two questions draupadi's questions is a very good analysis of the dice game throughout the sanskrit literature right from vedic times those articles are in english but his book is based on his that book is bharatiya prachin bharatiya duta is a marathi book and second thing which escaped the notice the hawk i of dr bhat was a recent publication this is the book a world of chess its development and variations through centuries and civilizations it is written by jean louis casox and rick nolton this is 217 i think had dr bhat been able to lay his hand on these two things the uh, papers by dr mehendra english papers and his book he would have been in a better position to add more things more important valuable documents to cover or should we encompass this study which is already intensive as well as extensive and as i said earlier exhausting as well as exhaustive so with these words i heartily congratulate dr bert 
the publisher, mainly my old friend, Manfred Eder, and all our old Indian scholars who are working in this field, and thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share some of my views on this very important topic on which I have been working for last 45 years. I may end on a personal note. I am six years in age senior to Dr. Irwin Finkel, who is doing a lot of work still in his office. I am a retired man and I am doing my work at home only. So with these words, I again profusely thank the organizers also for giving me this golden opportunity to give a few words, opinions of their this, uh, observations of mine throughout these years of my research. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vakankar, for your insights and observations. I would now like to introduce our next speaker for the evening, respected Ms. Astrid Vega. Ms. Vega is the director of the Gyothe Institute, popularly known as the Max Müller Bhavan, Calcutta. After studying cultural sciences at the University of Hildesheim, she worked for many years as a curator and publicist in the field of contemporary art. Until 2014, she handled the European Kunsthalle in Cologne. In 2014, she began her work at the Goethe Institute Moscow as director of the cultural programs with a regional assignment for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Since November 2020, she has taken over as director of the Goethe Institute in Kolkata, India. Ms. Vega, over to you. Thank you so much. It is a great honor and pleasure to be invited to say a few words today on the occasion of the launch of this excellent book by Professor Bhatta on dice play and the origin of chess in Sanskrit literature. The Goethe Institute being the cultural institute of the Federal Republic of Germany is a contact point abroad for all those who are interested in Germany, in German culture and in the German language. It is dedicated to foster cultural and academic exchange all over the world, to build bridges and to enhance international cultural, intellectual and academic cooperation. The book which we are celebrating today and we have heard many very interesting insights already, is the result and achievement of a long-term international, intellectual and academic cooperation. It builds bridges and it also stands for the close relations between scholars from India and Germany, who supported each other by exchanging ideas, by providing necessary contacts and reference materials. Johann Wolfgang Goethe, the famous German poet and the eponym of the Goethe Institute, suggests in his collection of lyrical poems entitled West Östlicher Divan, West Eastern Divan, that the game of chess has its origin in India. The West Eastern Divan was published in 1827. So it took quite a long time to prove this assumption, almost one century and a half when in 1982, Professor Bata published his book, Dice Play in Sanskrit Literature, followed by the publication, Origin and Genesis of Chess in 1994. And in 1996, we already heard of the International Symposium held in Pondicherry, but this assumption was consolidated. Johann Wolfgang Goethe once said, es ist wahr, das Schachspiel ist ein Probierstein des Gehirns, in English translation, it is true, the game of chess is a test stone of the human brain, meaning it is a splendid training of intellectual faculties and skills. The publication by Professor Bhatta proves that this is very true. It is an excellent in-depth study, providing an impressive range of sources, both in the original language as well as in English translation. And in doing so, sharing insights with an international community of scholars from different disciplines as well as with chess lovers all over the world. I'm not an expert in chess play, nor in Sanskrit literature. My expertise is in contemporary art. But as Dr. Finkel pointed out, Pro Professor Butter's book is very accessible and I found reading it very rewarding also for a lay person. I would like to congratulate Professor Bhatta and all those who contributed to and supported this excellent publication. And I wish the book many, many readers May it be the springboard for more 
many more inspiring conferences, debates, and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Vega, for sharing your thoughts with us. Our next speaker this evening is Professor C.S. Radhakrishnan, former professor and head, Department of Sanskrit, Pondicherry University. He has guided 20 students for MPhil and 20 students for PhD, besides authoring many Sanskrit dramas and lyrics. Professor Radhakrishnan has presented 75 research papers in national conferences and around 50 in international conferences. He was a member of the consultative committee of the International Association of Sanskrit Studies and presided over many sessions of the World Sanskrit Conference. <clears throat> what to you, Professor Radhakrishnan? Uh, thank you, Aparma Joshi. Distinguished uh, dignitaries, learned scholars, and my good friend, Dr. Bhatta. I can uh, justifiably claim that acquaintance with the Dr. Bhatta amongst us is for a very, very longer time with me than others because uh, we know each other from our student days, from our post-graduation days, uh, way back in 1974. And he was senior to me by one year. And when he chose this topic, Dice play in Sanskrit literature under the able guidance of late lavender illustrious professor Dr. Kunjumni Raja. We used to wonder that's a very strange and diff uh, entirely different topic that uh, he has chosen. Because normally people go for uh, some manuscript studies or uh, darshana and this and that. And we were very much fascinated by this uh, topic. And subsequently, when uh, he was the head of the department in the Pondicherry University, he organized this uh, approaching the roots of uh, chess in 1996. And I must say that even among the general public, more so even among the Sanskrit scholars, we were not aware of this fact that uh, dice play and the chess game are entirely different. We used to generally treat them all together. Though both are uh, board games, there's a lot of divergence, as uh, Dr. Rajendra rightly pointed out. And uh, what has been achieved in this book is that he has, he has uh, brought together these two aspects about what the Sanskrit literature has to say about uh, dice play and also how there are so many evidences, as rightly pointed out by Manfred Eder, in India of the origin of chess. We had the good opportunity of uh, studying the Kitava Sukta, the Gambler Sukta of Rigveda in our uh, post-graduation uh, studies. What fascinated me as a Alankarika was uh, some such expression where the mantra says, Niravartande auparis puranti ahasthasaha hastavandam sahante. I am uh, throwing the dice on the board. I am throwing them down, but they are dancing up. The gambler does not have the hand. Uh, he has the hands, but they do not have the hands. Still, the dice, they conquer the gambler who has got hands. So this kind of an expression fascinated me. And even for those who, who intently follow the religious worship, called the Sandhya Vandana, the Sayam Sandhya Vandana. I have been doing it myself for nearly 60 years. But only after going through this book that I understand that one of the mantras addressed to the deity Varuna he is involving this statement of a gambler. Kitava saha yadrirubhna devi yadvaga satyam udayam na vidma Sarvata Vishya Shitareva Deva Adade Syama Varuna Priyasaha. So it is a prayer to God Varuna to absolve us of all our sin by who, like a gambler, cheat others. So this expression Kitava Saha, I never knew that this is a plural form of Kitava, like Indra and Indra Saha. So there is an indirect reference to the gambler here in this mantra. And uh, now it is an eye-opener that even in our day-to-day -day worship, there is a mantra which is indirectly referring to a, a gambler. 
and similarly some of the approach of yaska and panini the great uh, grammarians in this field are so fascinating we say kitaba why is he called as a kitaba yaska very beautifully says kim tava he is asking his uh, opponent kim tava asti iti kitaba what do you have to keep as a stake how much are you going to stake in this uh, game in this gamble so his name itself became kitaba and not only that yaska also says the the board itself is called as irina in a way it is also called as nirrina because rina means a debt and uh, the man who is losing in a gamble he has to repay the money his uh, descendants cannot do that so uh, they may come forward but it is prohibited even in the gambling game there is there are there's some kind of a rule between them and naturally panini also deals with it he says uh, this divi uh, to play it can be used in karma and kar- uh, karana also akshane divyati you are playing the dice akshaihi divyati as a karana you are playing with the dice and uh, ashtapada the chess uh, game it is uh, quite different it is in fact called as a buddhi bala because the earlier one is a gamble this is an intellectual uh, game so to say and uh, references have been made by many sanskrit scholars for example by bartrihari of the 6th century where he says kalaha kalyaha bhuvana palage kridati prani sare with ittam uh, rajani divasaihi lolayanne dau ivakshau with the day and the night the two days you know the uh, the, the time factor is throwing on the bhuvana palaga on the board which is the earth itself and they are playing with the, our lives of the the inhabitants of the earth so there is a beautiful uh, poetic expression there similarly what uh, draws our attention is uh, bojas champu ramana of the 11th century where he says aksha kridam vidadum dashamuga nagari chatvare tatvare asau hanuman in a sundra kanda he he was about to kill aksha who is the son of uh, ravana there he says aksha kridam to the dice game whereas dashamuga nagari chatvare the quadrangle where the four uh, roads meet therefore the even the, the 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 shape of the board is indirectly mentioned there as a square dashamuga nagari chatvare tatvare so so like that uh, uh, professor uh, irwin uh, finkel referred to this the chess game is a four handed or two handed and uh, there are so many references as a exactly given by dr butter wherein it is said that instead of uh, waging a war the two kings decide let us uh, play the game of chess who is losing will surrender to the other one instead of waging a war which will result in killing of so many soldiers and so many loss of life so there we find that it is a two handed uh, opposing each other it's a two handed play so therefore we get a lot of idea as dr rajendra also very rightly pointed out how why it is called as chaturanga because in our army also we have data gaja turga padati and in the chess board also we have got all these uh, uh, coins uh, having the similar names so to say and i'm sure that a book of this nature is a, a path breaking one uh, in the sanskrit literature because this has opened a new avenue so to say because when it is lying only as a dissertation or a thesis in some library it doesn't serve the purpose as much as it would do now once this book is out and i congratulate dr patta who is a very fine combination as sri uh, singla ji mentioned a combination of uh, management and uh, sanskrit scholarship and skill and he has uh, rightly brought together all these factors in this book dice play and origin of chess in sanskrit literature and i congratulate dr butta and i congratulate motilal varanasidas publication for their excellent uh, publication of this book i'm sure it will be welcomed by many sasky scholars and indologists throughout the world thank you very much for this opportunity thank you so much thank you so much professor radhakrishnan for some very interesting observations there i now call upon respected ms ridula singh to share her insights with us 
Ms. Singh has been working for the education and political wing at the Consulate General of India in Frankfurt for the last 14 years. She is very active in the field of culture and teaching. She has been teaching Hindi, German and dance for the past 18 years. She has been part of panel discussions and seminars as an official moderator as well as for private events and programs. She enjoys being part of cultural programs, not leaving any stone unturned to showcase the cultural, culture of India on various platforms. Over to you, Ms. Singh. Thank you so much, Ms. Joshi. I am extremely, extremely honored to be a part of this book launch event. And in the presence of such eminent uh, scholars, speakers, and distinguished uh, uh, speakers and dignitaries, I'm extremely humbled. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Bhatta, to give me this chance. And uh, uh, I, I hope I deserve it. So uh, uh, first about me, I learned German and I studied German literature in uh, Delhi, in India. And then uh, very soon after that, I started teaching also at Max Miller Bhavan in uh, New Delhi. And I remember soon after that, uh, at one of the events uh, organized by Max Miller Bhavan Delhi, um, which I have to tell you that they uh, really organize very good, remarkable, uh, relevant and extraordinary social and cultural events that there was a cultural event and I had just joined as a teacher and uh, I entered into a small talk with uh, one of the German guests over there and uh, he asked me that there are many things uh, which can be attributed to Germany. Uh, can you name a few things which uh, can be uh, attributed to India like the originated, invented, discovered in India? what he meant was some brands or companies. And uh, I am being very honest, not a single company's name was coming to my mind. And at that point, I was in my early 20s and uh, the, the IT successes or corporate successes of India, I was not very well versed with. So I, uh, this conversation was going on in the mind, shall I say, Indian culture, Indian civilization. It is one of the oldest, if not the oldest civilization of the world. So this, what should I say, what should I say? And uh, suddenly I said, chess. And he was like, chess, it originates in India. And I felt very proud with double, double pride. I said, yes, it comes from India. And with whatever little knowledge of chess I had and whatever I had uh, heard and read, I told him about chopper, dices, chaturang, these, that, everything I said. But uh, I have to say as a uh, Professor Manfred Ader has also mentioned in the foreword that gaming came before speech. So uh, in India, not only originated yoga, spirituality, uh, Ayurveda, where one goes in pursuit of uh, happiness, peace and health, but gaming also originated like uh, the many of the board games as Professor Ader has mentioned. And in the book, Professor Bhatta has mentioned that it originated in India. Uh, so apart from all these board games, uh, game of um, snake and ladder and all, it, it, uh, the game of chess also originated. But I'm not here to speak about chess because everything that I would say has already been spoken and everything which I can mention is already there in the book. And so many eminent speakers on today's platform, they have spoken about it. I'm here and Professor Manfred Ada has no idea of what I'm going to speak about. I'm here to speak about the person, Professor Manfred Ader, to whom this book was dedicated. And my interaction with him, my how I, I mean, I'm so proud to say, I'm so happy to say that uh, we have uh, this friendship and how he contributed to this great cause and making this book a reality and how much dedication he had uh, for this book to come into existence and how he helped Professor Bhatta. I don't know about Professor Bhatta personally, to be uh, very, very uh, honest. All I know about Professor Bhatta is, uh, was through Professor Manfred Ader on his own accounts, how they met, how they uh, started the journey together and the picture that came to my mind after listening to all this was that of Rishi Vedvyas, the sage, the great sage Vedvyas and Lord Ganesha. The story of Hindu mythology goes that uh, great sage uh, Ved Vyas, he wanted to compose the epic of Mahabharata and Lord Ganesha, he agreed to do that on the condition that it has to be at one go and there will be no pause. So the untiring efforts of Manfred Ader and the inexplicable work by Professor uh, Pandurang Bhatta 
I feel the coordination between them is something of that sort. So uh, congratulations, uh, Professor Bhatta, on your work. And many uh, eminent speakers have spoken about your book and your work, uh, that it is a book to go to. It is a book one would refer for many decades to come. I don't know if uh, I may say that. I think I should say that your book is Bible on chess and uh, dices. And um, it has again brought to the foray the immense knowledge which is hidden in the Sanskrit literature of India. And um, uh, many mentions of uh, Mahabharata is also there in your book. So in which the Chaturanga, Chaturangi Sina in when I was a child, then father, mother, they used to say so many stories in which Chaturangi Sena, the uh, opponents used to mention about the four armed uh, army and all. So uh, I'm very, very happy that today I'm speaking about that. Um, I would definitely like to say something about Manfred Eder, that, that he is a legend when it comes to the immense work he has uh, done towards chess, to say the least. Uh, when for the first time he invited my husband and myself to uh, see his collection at his home. Uh, believe me, uh, learned audience, I thought how many collections one could have at home, 25, 50, in extreme case, 100. But I fell from, I, it was like falling from a cliff and my jaws dropped when I saw that, what I saw. Uh, 300 plus were on display and 200 plus uh, chess sets were safely stuck somewhere for just lack of place to showcase. In fact, his home is a personification of his dedication to the game of chess and dice games and all that goes with it. The sheer love, the purity of excitement with which he shows his collection acquired over a period of around 50 years and the story associated with each set of chess it's, it's just amazing to listen to. And if I don't mention the name of Karin Ada, uh, Mr. Manfred Ada's wife, it will be utter injustice. The time, the patience, and not to speak of Bunny, she has spent and invested in the passion of uh, Manfred uh, walking beside him in this journey is so, so much and so amazing that it is simply inspiring. She has dedicated herself to the dedication of Manfred, to say the least. He's uh, nurturing this dedication, this passion, this love for chess for at least 55 years. Uh, please correct me, Mr. Ada, if I am uh, if I have said it uh, less, if not more. And the love with which both husband and wife, Manfred and Karin Ada, they are putting in their projects of chess is awe-inspiring. I have, um, I had uh, his, CV to know something more. I, I have to tell you this, that he's by profession is uh, he's into commercial advertising, marketing, business management, but he's dedicated just this much part to this uh, work. And the 80% part of his CV is dedicated only to the work of chess, FSG, which is a founder member of, director of, and um, chess collectors or uh, worldwide chess collectors, uh, international chess collectors initiated in the USA. Uh, I can just go on about the number of projects, the number of presentations he has done uh, towards the cause of making uh, chess very popular and to give its due uh, place. Uh, I'm going to speak about his uh, efforts, uh, whatever little I know, and involvement with Consulate General of India in Frankfurt. In 2019, he approached uh, us uh, directly. He wrote to me regarding a meeting with the then Consul General, Madam Pratima Parker. And when during the meeting, he spoke how India should do something about applying to make chess a cultural world heritage, heritage and how the origin of chess lies definitely in India, especially Patna and Kannauj, my eyes shone a bit more. As originally my parents come from exactly, my father comes from Patna and my mother comes from Gaya. So I felt uh, more prouder at that time. Mr. Ada was going to be part of delegation. I think it was, it was February, 2020. He was going to be part of delegation for a meeting in Kannauj, Mission Kannauj, for convincing the authorities also to, for reopening the work of excavation of mounds in Kannauj. Um, the Mokris, which came from uh, Bihar, he had been stressing the requirement so much as if his life depended on it. Uh, such a dedication I have very rarely seen and which has persisted. It is still continuing for so long. And Madam Parker, uh, the great person that she was, and uh, they gelled together and she supported by writing a message for the delegation and the book that the work uh, 
and efforts be uh, fruitful. And um, the whole thought behind it was uh, that the Indian authorities would support the cause more and cooperate in the efforts of delegation and uh, those involved. And uh, Professor Manfred, either the way you narrated the story, your efforts, purpose, the, the results and the journey, it was nothing short of magic. Uh, in fact, you took us on the time machine many hundreds and thousands of years back with your story. And we just sat there with childlike excitement and curiosity created by your story. And I must say you are a great storyteller. Um, you told us and emphasized the fact that the earliest chess figures were found, which are found till now, the Afrasiab group and the five chess men, they came from India. So what else does one need to make it a world heritage? So in fact, uh, he had also some figures with, I think I have some pictures also, which he brought. Uh, can, can all of you see the pictures? Yeah, I don't know. I can't see. I don't know. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, thank you. So all these pictures and they were in fact figure, figurines on figures also which he had uh, uh, brought and showed us. So the meeting uh, was in early Feb of 2020 and then came Corona. After that, there were some occasions when a request was made from his side to send draft articles, letters, etc. Et to India on urgent basis uh, as normal post uh, would go lost or reach in months. So uh, here our consul um, for culture, Mr. Ram Singh Chauhan, he really took it upon himself to uh, help in this cause and he always arranged for the post to be sent to India. And uh, Mr. Chauhan had said, I remember that if somebody being from Germany is doing so much for India, for Indian chess and for this book being written by Professor Bhatta, then the least we can do is that we can be at least an instrument, uh, a help to send the required documents or drafts or papers or manuscripts where they should be in India and as fast as possible. And somehow he would send it to India at the earliest because uh, remember that was a Corona time. So even the diplomatic bags and all, they were finding it difficult to be uh, sent, but he really took it upon himself uh, so that this work is not hindered. And uh, there again, we got to uh, know about uh, uh, Manfred and his dedication and love for chess more and more. He would, for some reason, CC me in the communications with the Indian organization, organizers of Mission Kannauj, uh, Indian museums, curators, Indian authorities, and of course, Professor Bhatta. And the amount of details he would pay to each and every movement and work be being undertaken in India in this regard was awe-inspiring. He, he, he was taking care of even the snacks and water arrangement at the meeting and accommodation. And any other facility that uh, uh, to give for each person who was involved and all of that he was doing from here during Corona times. In fact, even the person who would help carrying the work papers or some drafts with one within one office to another in Delhi or Kannauj or UP, he was paying so much attention to and giving such respect to him. I, I was baffled. I was so inspired and it was so beautiful to just observe that. And uh, uh, in fact, my uh, love in this uh, dice games, in fact, uh, rejuvenated, re, uh, was rediscovered by this whole thing. Uh, we in India, in fact, as uh, kids, especially in rural parts of India, we play these dice games a lot. And I really hope that even now in this modern age of smartphones and video games, they do that. So they're called Gitti or uh, Saap Siri, the snakes and ladder, chopper. And though I was born and brought up in city, but I played with them as most of the kids in that era, stones, pebbles, uh, they were all our makeshift dices. So um, in many stories that my parents told me at the young age, dice games was an integral part of everyday life, especially kings and people in their courts. And how many stories unfolded, tables were turned, lives were changed with each move of a dice. So we were, but we were strictly prohibited to even talk, let alone play the dangerous version of the game, the gambling. So in fact, in the greatest epic of the world, as mentioned many a times in Professor Bhatta's book, uh, the Mahabharata, the prelude to the war, Was I unmuted? Something happened. <laughs> okay. 
uh, was a game of dice played between the Pandavas and the Kauravas, which led to the war and destruction and again, uh, rebuilding of an entire empire. So through oh. Professor Bhatta's book, I'm very sure the Mahabharata and the hidden knowledge in the Sanskrit literature would again come to the front. So Mahabharata, which, uh, if we may proudly say, we can proudly say is the longest epic of the world, 200, 2 million verses, 1 million uh, shlokas, in fact, 1.8 million words. And it is believed that it could have taken 600 years to write. It is eight times longer than Homer's Iliad and Odyssey combined. And if not for, as the legend goes, the mythology goes, if Lord Ganesha would not have agreed, it would have taken that much time. But uh, the whole process of rediscovering chess through Manfred Ader, it was a new lesson for, of life for me and my husband, not just about the game, but rather how a person can have and maintain a passion at every stage of his life. A passion is not just a matter of convenience that one can follow it when one is young, when one has money, when one has time or one has energy or power. It is uh, something which can be followed, had uh, about anything that one's heart is pulled to. And then how to work untiringly despite all odds, despite the hindrances towards it. And your love and dedication for chess is unforeseen and immense inspiring Mr. Manfred Ader and Professor at, uh, Pandurang Bhatta. Thank you so much for this book. And I'll go back again to that uh, mythology, Hindu mythology story of Lord Ganesha and Sage uh, Ved Vyas. So as I told, uh, Lord Ganesha had said that it has to be in one go without any pause and you have to dictate it. But uh, Rishi or Sage uh, Ved Vyas, he was an old man, so he needed his pauses. So when he had to take breath, as the legend goes, what he would do, he would uh, say some very, very, very difficult uh, verses. And then Lord Ganesha would have to scratch his head. What has he said? So in, during that time, uh, Rishi Vedvyas would take a deep breath and then prepare the next verse. I can't unmute. Is it? It's okay. Sorry? Now it's okay. Okay, okay. I think we have lost her. There must have been some connection problem. Yeah. Should we continue or should we wait? Yeah. I think we should continue. Okay. Yes, so that, that was a lovely talk from Ms. Singh. I now call upon the author of the book, Professor C. Panduranga Bhatta, to share his thoughts with us. Professor Bhatta, former professor at the Indian Institute of Management, is the author of the book, Dice Play and Origin of Chess in Sanskrit Literature, that is being launched today. He has published six books and many research articles in reputed journals in India and abroad. He is the honorary advisor to Smartian, a startup venture that helps educational institutes through artificial intelligence-based products and services. He's also the founder of the Samanvaya Academy for Excellence, which promotes human values in corporate circles and educational institutes. Professor Bhatta, over to you. Respected speakers, team members of India Study Center, Mumbai, partners of Moti Lal Banaras Publications, New Delhi, participants from India and abroad. I feel it is appropriate to recall now some of the unforgettable moments connected with the production of this book, Dice Play and Origin of Chess in Sanskrit Literature, launched today. The first moment is related to Mr. Egbert Meisenberg from Sivetal, Germany. He contacted me with a request for a comprehensive study of the early history of chess in India way back in 1993. I accepted and worked on that proposal. Later, he published a monograph titled Origin and Genesis of Chess based on my research. The second and the most significant moment is my participation in the International Colloquium on Board Games in Academia at Leiden University, Netherlands in 1995. During the colloquium, Mr. Manfred Eder, Dr. Irving Finkel, and Dr. Andreas Bokrami 
requested me to organize a symposium on the origin of chess. I agreed to their proposal and organized an international symposium on approaching the roots of chess in November 1996 at the Pondicherry Central University located in India. This symposium has helped a successful cooperation between some British and German chess historians and Indian scholars representing the faculties of Sanskrit, history, and archaeology, focusing on chess research. The impact of the symposium was very significant because it inspired many major international level events and publications. Dr. Andreas Bokraming, who is no more with us, deserves the thanks of all Sanskrit scholars, Indologists, and lovers of chess history, because he has written a beautiful summary with his own comments on all the papers presented at the symposium. His article is published in the book launched today. I sincerely thank Mr. Pranav Jain, partner of Motilal Banas Das Publications for making the full video of the Pondicherry Symposium available free of cost on YouTube. I am glad many stalwarts of the Pondicherry Symposium have spoken in today's book launch event. Pondicherry Symposium's aim was to seek the final answer to the query whether India is truly the birthplace of chess. It is my pleasure to share some of the conclusions arrived at the symposium and recorded in the book. According to Mr. Manfred A.J. Eder, the concept of checkmate or king not to be killed in chess is India's contribution. It has been argued elaborately in the book that the divinity of the king found in Sanskrit literature has led to the concept of immortality of the king, both in war and in the game of chess. The concept of righteous war, Dharma Vijaya, is a unique ancient Indian concept which has influenced the game of chess. Because of this influence, two opposing parties agree to respect each other's king. I mentioned here very briefly other important points in favor of India being the country of origin of chess, endorsed by many chess historians. Persians unanimously agree that the game was imported from India in the 6th century AD. This game was known in India as Chaturanga, that is the four angas or members of an army which are said to be elephants, horses, chariots, and foot soldiers. Due to the corruption of the pure Sanskrit word, it was changed by the Persians into Chatran, and the Arabs changed it further into Shatran. Later, due to successive changes, it became Shechki, Ishesh, and Chess. According to Dr. Rinate Sai, Indian kings were using the simulation of battle with terracotta figures of elephants, horses, chariots, and foot soldiers for learning the art of war. It is quite probable that from such a didactic model, the game of Chaturanga got developed in about 6th century AD. This book asserts that the references to gam gaming board pieces, dice, and gamesmen found in Sanskrit literature and unearthed by archaeological excavations throw fresh light on Indian origin of chess. What Mr. Eder says is important in this context. I quote, my personal conclusion from investigating game pieces in lots, especially those from Indian territories, even almost 20 years has taught me that the origin of what so far is called 
Arabian Islamic chessmen has its home base in India. He suggests for a systematic archaeological excavation in Kanauj, the former capital of King Harshavardhana and the Maukari kings, located in the present Uttar Pradesh of India. Recently, Mr. Eder has sent a representation to UNESCO, wherein he says, I quote, the game of chess, an Indian invention, should be awarded by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage, also called an immaterial world heritage. I personally appeal to all concerned officials and Sanskrit scholars in India and abroad to extend their full support to Mr. Manfred A.J. Eder for getting UNESCO award in favor of India. Finally, I want to point out that Sanskrit scholars and Indologists have not taken much initiative to contribute to this field. Chess and other board games are significant on many levels, contributing to history, anthropology, sociology, psychology, and many other disciplines. I hope Sanskrit scholars and Indologists participating in this event would certainly encourage their students to take interest in topics like history of chess and board games for their research projects. I thank all the speakers for participating in this event and sharing their valuable views on the book despite their busy schedules. I am grateful to Dr. Mukda Karnik and, and team members of India Study Center for arranging this book launch event in a grand manner. I also thank Sri Rajiv Jain and Sri Pranav Jain, partners of Moti Lal Banas Das Publications, New Delhi, for publishing the book most neatly and elegantly. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Bhatta. I would now like to ask respected Sri Ramesh Gauri Raghavan, my colleague at the Institute and Trust, to sum up this evening's proceedings. Sri Raghavan has seven years of experience in scientific research, especially with PCR and biochemistry skills, followed by 15 years of experience in digital marketing, bringing several brands to market in memorable and award-winning ways. He's also a teacher researcher in the field of Indian linguistics, ethno-archaeology and epigraphy with eight years of experience, having published several papers. Over to you, Ramesh. Please unmute. Huh? Yeah. Thank you very much, Aparna. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful to Dr. Mukta Karnik and to Dr. Bhatta for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Ma'am, your encouragement and support has helped Instusen become a global name in board game research. Although we got interrupted by the pandemic, I really look forward to the research output that will come from Instusen in the next few years, uh, along with, of course, Institution, what it does best, creating platforms for such research. You know, when David Pilot wrote that the best games in the world come from India, I also hope that some of the best board game research will now come from India. And after the Pondicherry Symposium and our own playing with the past and playing with memories, we really have big shows to fill. Uh, when I logged in, I was overwhelmed to see the academic stars from India and abroad. I have never been in the same frame with Irving Finkel and Panduranga Bhatta <laughs> and S.Y. Vakankar ever in my life. So I, I had a moment of hyperventilation. Uh, thank you so much for Aparna for anchoring the conference. And I mean it in a very literal sense. Uh, Dr. Finkel, you were an inspiration for me growing up. If a person is allowed to consider his 30s as growing up. Uh, I remember a particular phrase you used, cheap and cheerful, in a book on Indian games. That phrase has helped us hone our own philosophy of games education 
because we use everyday objects to fashion game boards whenever we do our awareness and education sessions with school children the country over and that really gives them great play of creativity uh man her manfred when you were giving your keynote i was briefly out of network so i missed that part but you being who you are you had sent your keynote ahead for use in an emergency i don't think you foresaw this emergency but since i read your keynote i am very happy to say i noted what you want to say and we have had a long conversation going on about getting chess the unesco recognition that it should get and i hope that all our efforts will work together for it dr dalal i'm very thankful to you for uh seeing this through even though you've been very ill with covid but you play the long game sir this is a, this has been a very unique book launch where i've seen diplomats and academics together that rarely ever happens but then what else other than chess which has contributed so much to the vocabulary of diplomacy you know to bring the two together shingla ji and patnaik ji you will be conversant with the term soft power and chess contributes a very ancient indian soft power you know one of the earliest instances of diplomatic soft power exercised by india is actually recorded in a persian text known as the visarishna chatrang where an indian uh, king sent across a chess board to the persian king with a legendary challenge and then there's a long poem about it. so in keeping with her ider's quest for recognizing india as the origin of a uh, play in of the long game of chess here's at least one instance where india's position as vishwa guru is actually born out and i hope this continues uh, professors rajendran professor vakankar professor radha krishnan i have long followed you online and read some of your papers and you have been an encouragement to me because i have long thought that sanskrit study is consisted only of religious texts like the dharma shastras studied by pv kane uh, or the high drama of kalidasa is following your sanskrit research that i have realized how much playful how much joyful the language really is and i hope a lot of scholars will now follow your footsteps there are lots more texts that have not come to international attention just such as the cheto vinodana kavyam the krida koshalyam and the chaturanga sara sarvaswam so i hope uh, there will be great scholarship following in your footsteps okay frau wege uh, i thank you a lot for your encouragement because there will be a lot of scope i am sure for future collaboration uh, between germany Europe and India on this. Shrimati Singh, thank you very much for the bridges you have also helped to build between India and Germany, especially with Herr Eder. I have very fond memories of meeting Herr Eder at Kanauj, which was the birthplace of chess. So very very appropriate place to meet him, I think. And um, one of the thrills was that when he wanted to see some of the Maukri chess pieces, they were in the reserve collection of the museum. and i sort of bullied the museum curator to open the reserve collection and let uh, her edder you know see the pieces that he had come from such a great distance to see uh dr bhatta kanauj is also where i first met you and it was a great delight meeting you and uh, i am amazed It, at the very delight with which you approach everything uh you no know, the enthusiasm with which you received my very simple poster i owe you a very big thanks for that uh it's also because of you that i got a renewed interest in sanskrit literature when i read your first work which is uh your very seminal thesis on dice play in indian uh, sanskrit literature it's from you that i discovered the gambler's lament in the rigveda it is still my favorite piece of sanskrit poetry 
think it is still better than anything Kalikasha wrote. But that's my opinion. So I have a fond hope that you will star in our next conference as and when we can have it. Okay. Uh, the publishers, Motilal Banarsidas, my thanks to you. You had a very cute little store at Mahalakshmi, Mumbai. I used to haunt it and spend a lot of my pocket money buying Indological books. Even though I was then in training for becoming a geneticist. Um, sad your store has closed, but I hope you will have another presence in Mumbai soon. And I'm also thankful so many of my friends are here, uh, enthusiasts of chess and enthusiasts of Sanskrit attending this program on behalf of Instrusen. And personally, I thank all of you for having attended this. Uh, my last comments, you know, from the gambler's lament in the Rigveda 6000 BC to Shatranj ke Khiladi uh, of uh, Satyajit Ray, both dice and chess games have kept generations of Indians busy. Sometimes to the neglect of state affairs, sometimes as the very proxies of state affairs. No? Indeed, speaking in diplomatic terms, if you see the Boris uh, Spassky uh, Fisher game at Reykjavik. It is as much a history of diplomacy as a history of chess itself. Right? I miss my friend, the scholar Renate Syed here. I wish she'd been able to come and I wish her the best of health. But there is something she used to say with great delight, citing from Bana's Harsha Charita. We live in a time of war, uh, pestilence and potential famine. Uh, when these three horsemen of the apocalypse are riding around, I'm thrown back to the ideal state of peace as described by Barna. You know, when armies and strategies are only drawn up on the chessboard as Ashtapadana Chaturanga Kalpana. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no. Please go ahead. I, I, sorry, I think I lost my connection for a bit. So I've just uh, joined. Uh, Ramesh, have you concluded your speech? Yeah, yeah. He, he uh, had. Okay. Okay. Manfred okay. Okay. May I, yeah, may I please have the word for one sentence, which is very important? May I? Yeah. Please, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the speaker's uh, presentations, uh, several times I was called a doctor or a professor. Uh, it is a necessary correction that I have no academic degree. Please record this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you, Ramesh, for a truly really succinct and uh, truly insightful summarizing of the evening's proceedings. I now invite uh, respected Sri Rajiv Jain, partner Motilal Banarsidas Publications, New Delhi, to offer a vote of thanks. The publishers of the book being launched today, Motilal Banarsidas Publications, is a leading Indian publishing house in Sanskrit and Indology since 1903. It publishes and distributes scholarly publications on Asian religions, philosophy, history, culture, arts, architecture, archaeology, language, literature, and other related subjects. It also brings out books based on research and study conducted at organizations such as the Indian Council of Historical Research, Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, and the India, Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Shri Jain, over to you. Hello, I, I hope you can hear us we at Motigal Panarsidas publications are privileged to have published Professor Butter's book. We would like to wholeheartedly thank the organizers, honorable guests, and all participants for honoring us with your gracious uh, presence at the online event. Our special thank to 
go, goes to Dr. Frickel, on, uh, Pinkel, Honorable Manfred Adler, Adler Honorable Patnaik Ji, Honorable Harshwardhan Singla Ji, Professor Vakankar, Professor Rajendra, Honorable uh, Miss Vek, Professor Radha Krishnan, and the entire team of the Indian Study Center Trust Mumbai. Last but not the least, we would like to thank Professor Bhatta for giving us an opportunity to publish this book. Thank you very much for your great pleasure. Thank you so much, Rijay, for those words. And that brings us to the end of a truly wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today and being a part of the wonderful evening. Wish you all a very good day. Thank you so much. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you. We'll end the meeting, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. In case uh, anyone wants to speak, uh, I mean, they have met after a long time if they want to chat with each other. Or I'll just, I'll end it on YouTube. So then, oh, yeah. please do that. One minute. Those who want to chat can stay, rest can leave.